Hi guys. Right, I need a fence. But the issue with modelling a prototype like this is that you need a specific type of fence, not one commercially available, so the next best thing is making my own. I've opted for a fine mesh from scale model scenery. Well, that and some barbed wire, but that looks a little bit too large for 4mm, so I'll save that for another project. In fact, I found this mesh too fine, so I ordered the next size up. While I wait for that to arrive, I'll get on with the posts. I'm using styrene strip for this. I decided that the best way to go about making these in a larger quantity would be to spray them all before cutting the strips into individual pieces. These, now brown strips, can get a bit of surface detail by adding a light dry brush layer of light antique white. There's not a super easy way to do this as the thin styrene strip moves about. I guess you can make a jig to support it, but I won't be making a jig, I'd rather struggle. The mesh is no different, due to how light this stuff is it's really difficult to spray. In the end I pinned it down on some cardboard, which worked a lot better than this pathetic attempt. Once it's been sprayed the mesh can be cut into strips suitable for the final fence. The reason I'm cutting it at a 90 degree angle is due to the fencing and angwern or requiring the wires to go parallel to the ground, and the mesh sheet are on the diagonal. No good. Luckily it's only a fabric mesh and it cuts easily with a sharp knife or scissors, and I'm guessing I need about 5 strips of it for the whole fence. Ok, now I'm ready to have a go at building the fence. So the first thing I did was drill a number of post size holes in the ground along the fence's path with a pin drill. I've made the holes at a scale distance, obviously. I could have cut the post prior to sinking them in the ground, but actually the depth depends on how deep I drilled the hole in the landscape, so I thought it would make a tidier finish if I glued them all into their randomly deep hole and then cut them to correct height above the ground. This styrene is pretty soft and cuts easily with scissors so it's not too difficult to work with along the bank. I use super gel for the posts, which means that by the time I've made my way to the end of the fence, most of the posts are already set hard at the beginning, so I can move on to the wire mesh. As with a real fence, I'll attach the wire to each post individually, which should give a nice unique finish. I'll use super glue to bond the mesh to the posts, and I found the most effective way to do this is to first add the glue to the post itself, and then use a cocktail stick to push the wire mesh up against it. Hopefully you can see how this fence has actually taken quite a long time to make up, as each step needs repeating over and over again. The posts need touching up with earth brown for two reasons. The first are the tips of the posts where cut from the styrene strip and show white, and the other being that the dry brushing looks a little bit too heavy, and I wanted to touch back in with some of the main colour. The final job here is to tone down the mesh, as it's looking very new and shiny and fake. The black wash will stain the mesh and hopefully leave it looking a little bit more subtle. And as I said, due to the amount of time taken on the fence, that's all the modelling I've done this week. However, since I built the baseboards I haven't had the fiddle yard connected up to the two scenic boards, and I wanted to make sure that all this stock I've been making actually runs across the joins. And the only way to do that is to have a good old running session. So, sit back, grab a drink, and enjoy some not quite complete shots of some prototypical formations running.
Cheers. <laughs>